Welcome to Around the Dog World. We're here at the Stafford County Showground for National Terrier, the biggest terrier show in the country. Now, after the ecstatic highs of Crufts, April seen some specialist shows and some group shows. And we're joined by Victoria Wilkins today. Thanks for joining us. So we've seen some really interesting wins in the last few weeks at UK Toy and Scottish Breeds. Yeah, at UK Toy, the Maltese were best in show. Sarah and Rose, Mary Jackson's uh, Benetton Gold Boots. It's been a fantastic show for them because they've actually won best in show with three generations. Their first being Highlight Risque Gold Fever and then his son Benetton Gold Ring and now his son Benetton Gold Boots. So it's a real hat trick for them. And moving on to Scottish Breeds Canine Club, where Best in Show went to a smooth collie that has a bit of an unusual career. Yeah, this is a smooth collie, Fox Earth French Eclipse, who actually came back to breed as Trevor and Birgit Haywood last year. Uh, she actually came from a pet home, so and she's only been lightly shown for the past couple of years. She's now a veteran at seven, and she's been to five shows, and she's got her show certificate now. Right. Makes the 64th champion for the kennel, so it's a fantastic achievement. Wow, that is great, and yeah. for a veteran as well. And then to go best, best in show. show. Yeah, it really shows that veterans can push the young dogs for best in show. Thanks very much, Victoria, and let's hope we can see some interesting stories develop from the best in show rings here today. Absolutely, I hope so too. Today, we will jump straight into the action from best in show, but with a few extras. Commentary in the main ring is from Howard Ogden. The Airedale Terrier, Jockill Red Ribbons, owned by Olive Jackson and Mary Swash. This bitch, Bonnie, has two cc's and comes from the Jockill Kennel, which has been top breeder for four consecutive years. Paul Erdley and Sue McCourt's Australian Terrier, Jaskarin Magic Number, imported from Sweden. This was his first cc since moving to the UK and went best dog at Manchester. His father won best in show at Birmingham National and Bath last year. It was a great day for Sharon Ames. Her Sharnor Emerald Electra, the Bedlington Terrier, won her third ticket, making her a champion. The pet name of this dog is called Muffin. Now, this being a terrier show, we thought we should take a closer look at some of the breeds on show today. And as Feralith is going over the border terrier, let's start there. We met Wendy Mooney, a long-time border terrier breeder and donor, to find out more about this rugged little breed. Hello, welcome to Chesterton. My name is Wendy Mooney. I'm a breeder of Border Terriers along with my husband Andrew and we've been in the breed for over 20 years. We got into the breed because we were looking for a nice handy sized pet and we both liked the look of the Border Terrier. It was sort of no nonsense, fun looking dog. We looked into the breed and we realised how nice the temperament was and that it seemed to fit exactly what we wanted from a dog. Uh, fun loving, active, liked companionship, liked going for walks, living in the country, got on with people, very affectionate. If you asked a school child to draw a picture of a dog, it would probably look something like a Border Terrier. We liked the, the harsh coat and the sweet otter face and the kind eyes. So we started out with two male Border Terriers and someone suggested that we might like to start showing them, which we did and we absolutely loved and got bitten by the bug and have been showing ever since. We've steadily gone on and, and bred our own Border Terriers over the years. Uh, we've had a lot of fun taking them on holiday, going away with them, and that was one of the things we wanted, something that wasn't so big we couldn't take it with us everywhere. Diesel, let's go, girl, come here. Let's go. And that's what we find, that they just love people. Originally, it was bred to go fox hunting. The breed was designed and started up in the 19th century where a type of terrier 
specifically for hunting foxes started up. Originally the breed was called the Coquette Dale Terrier, which is where they came from, um, but soon were adopted by uh, a, a pack of foxhounds called the Border Foxhounds, which then became their name. The area they come from is quite rough countryside. It's hilly, it's the area north of England and into the Scottish border. So the dog has to have quite long legs to be able to deal with that sort of terrain. It needs a good harsh double coat because of the weather and the sort of work they were bred to do. The border terrier actually has to be quite uh, sociable because it originally was, was kept with the foxhounds, so it cannot afford to be argumentative. Some terriers can be a little more vocal and argumentative, but the border is very sociable, very easygoing, doesn't tend to start any sort of argument or fight, couldn't afford to be if it was in amongst a great big pack of foxhounds. And probably a lot of its behaviour, being quite laid back, comes from being around foxhounds, which are quite a laid back breeds. The breed gradually got more popular, although it didn't really take off until the last 20, 30 years. Um, the first borders were registered around about 1914, and the breed Border Terrier was recognised by the Kennel Club in 1920. My reasons for loving the Border Terrier so much are that they are so good with people. They are such loving dogs. They love human companionship. They're not the sort of breed you'd want to have left at home while you go out to work every day. They would hate that. They really are very well behaved, providing they have plenty of human companionship. They're equally good outside and inside, so they make very good house pets. Uh, very well behaved, really quite biddable. Of all the terrier breeds, they're probably the most biddable. And they are actually quite easy to train. You put a bit of work in, they are so willing to please. Lots get used for mini agility um, and trained for lots of different tasks. As long as you don't expect too much, it is a terrier at the end of the day and it's got its own idea on how things should be done. As a breed, they're very greedy and they will obviously want to please you for that treat. And many pet border terriers are overweight, unfortunately, because they will never say no to food and they are very good at always looking hungry. But that apart, they are well behaved and they're perfect ladies dog within the home and they will just follow you around and do whatever you're doing. They're happy being inside, curled up by the fire, but equally, if you want to go outside and do a day's work, they're up for that. They're game for that and they will be happy to be outside. So a man's dog outside, a woman's dog inside. They suit everybody. And if you've got children, they will play with your children endlessly, tirelessly and happily. Well, thank you very much, Wendy. A great insight into the background of one of the most popular dogs in the UK and a great advertisement as to why they are so popular. This is Sue Wilson's Border Terrier, Older Hill, Afortunado, who took his first CC at the show. Archie's handler, Sue, was elated with this win, as was the crowd. Unfortunately, the Bull Terrier was not present for best in show, but this is the miniature Bull Terrier. Sally and Jill Richardson's Quayardson Sir Albus. Harry took his second CC in Best of Breed today. He took his first CC at Midland Counties out of the puppy class at the same venue. So Stafford Showground is a lucky patch for him. Earlier on today, we went to see the Bull Terrier being judged in the breed ring. Let's go and take a closer look. So this is the challenge for best dog and best bitch in Bull Terriers. At the front there we've got the best dog. The handler's doing everything they can to try and uh, bait them and make them look their best. For the judge, Amanda Young. She's just going to uh, get them to move again. This is Georges Bull de Capanis at Javoké.
looking a very happy dog. And this, best bitch, Dan Bull devoted. So the judge, Amanda Young, a very experienced judge in both breeds. And who's it going to go to? Ah, it's best male. So there we go. Best male goes best of breed. And best opposite six goes to the bitch. So there we go. Best of breed, Georges Bull de Cabanis at Javoke. So now we have the challenge for the best puppy in breed. Dan Bull Desperado, another one from the same kennel, so they had a great day today. And De Bully Divine Vision at Barbels. This was the best puppy bitch Bull Terrier winner. Lots of people were watching the breed today. Packed crowd ringside. Ah, and it goes to the male. So a very good day for that team and that kennel. Dan Bull Desperado is best puppy Bull Terrier at National Terrier. Come back after the break to find out more about the Bull Terrier. I just have to have a little, because memory's not very good. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> well, at that time, they were more pack type. Um, uh, with a bit of a snipey face and not much of a head. There was, there was nothing really much. And the temperaments were very friendly, but they were wild. And, Champion Darling Gamble. And if there's anyone in the audience who has never heard of Champion Darling Gamble, you may leave now. Because, <laughs> uh, well, he changed the breed, didn't he? Absolutely. To to that totally. Dog. Yes, he did. He changed the breed for temperaments and everything. How old? He said, two tickets. <laughs> so I said to my ring steward, give him his third. I said, he said, <laughs> <laughs> not bloody much, he says. It's not Tom, you're bleeding too far. <laughs> Cause it's a sin to tell a lie. How's that? I'm down by ring number seven where bull terriers have just been judged and I'm joined by Linda McGregor who is the Kennel Club breed health representative for the breed. Now Linda just tell us where did the bull terriers originate? Um, they were originally um, originated from the bulldog, the English terrier which doesn't exist anymore and the Dalmatian and they were bred as a companion dog and as a gentleman's dog. And you've been involved in the breed since the early 80s, now what attracted you to this breed? Um, I wanted a, a big character dog but I didn't want a, a big bodied dog so this fulfilled that criteria and it's a very good all-round family pet for children. They've got a very distinctive uh, shape of the skull, can yes. you talk us a little bit about that? The standard says it should be an egg-shaped with an arc to the head and should be nicely filled and the mouth should be over the bottom teeth. So. We've seen a lot of dogs in the, the breed today that are white in colour, yes. um, what other colours do they come in? Um, they come in brindle, brindle and white, red and white, sometimes black brindle and white, and you can get like a fawn colour as well. But the colours are very popular at the moment. And you're a championship show judge yes. for this breed, yes. and the miniature version, yes. which is actually just coming into the ring behind yes. us. Um, what are the differences between the two, apart from the size? Well, the standard says they should be exactly the same, but the miniature is like 14 inches to the shoulder, ideally, or under. And um, But body shape and the standard is exactly the same. Miniatures, because they're small, they seem a bit more agile, and uh, yeah, they, they're quite full-on 
<laughs> but uh, they're very amenable to discipline as well, like the Bull Terrier. Well, thank you very much, Linda. Okay. I'm joined by the Bull Terrier judge, Mandy Young. It was your fifth time giving tickets in this breed today, yes. and you had 64 dogs there. What did you make of them? Lovely. I mean, they all showed very well, to be fair. Uh, a lot of them freestand their Bull Terrier with bait, as you can see. Um, they all move well. Um, I was very impressed, as I say, the way they moved their animals and presented their animals, all in lovely condition, which is great, um, and everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves. And what about your main winners, your Bitch CC winner and your Dog CC winner? Quality was excellent. I have seen these previously at shows, but of course you judge on the day. It, it was a pleasure to go over them, in excellent condition, showed well. You know, he was very much a lovely dog and she was very much a beautiful bitch. I was very pleased with the winners. Was there a lot of people watching ringside? Yes, always. The ball terriers always get a good turnout. There's always lots of people watching, of course, because they are interested in the breed. Well, congratulations on your fifth CC appointment today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So here is the miniature bull terrier moving in the group. Quayerton Sir Albus, who we saw on the table earlier. Owned by Sally and Jill Richardson. Jerry Robinson's Cruzo Bilbo Baggins was winning a second CC, his first coming from a breed club show, and he also has a reserve CC. The Chesky Terrier, owned by Wendy Tobijanski, Jansky Celtic Keska. Kelska now has a total of 37 best of breeds, four of which are for four consecutive years at Crufts. It was a momentous day for Francis Chapman King, who's handling Inzivar Royal Silver, the Dandy Dinmont. She made up the 30th champion for her Inzivar Kennel today. Jeff Corish was handling Jenny Thornton and Roger Bebbington's Chesitry Sunday's Grace by Glendra Terra. Connie has two CCs and she's the daughter of the 2006 Dog World Pro Plan Pup of the Year winner, champion Glendra Terra Sunset Strip. There was another champion today made up in Wire Fox Terriers, Broccoli to Strike for Anne Moore. He has three reserve CCs and was best of breed at Crufts. <laughs> this Glen of Imal Terrier, owned by Jane Withers, Romainville Eof at Pajantic, had a great weekend, winning Group 4 at Slough Canine the day before the show in a first CC and best of breed at National Terrier. Here's a dog that's featured on previous programmes, the champion American champion Fleet Street Fenway Fan, winning his 15th CC at the show, it's top terrier in 2011. It's won over 100 groups in America, owned by Tony Barker and Victor Malzoni, handled by John Averis. Cara Devani's Kebulak Asian Provocateur was winning a second CC. His father was best of breed in National Terrier last year and was the CC winner at Crufts 2011. Another dog winning its second CC on the day was Ricky Cartwright's American champion Saradin Midnight in Blue, handled by Warren Bradley. First CC for this dog was one at Crufts. So the judge is now going over the Manchester Terrier. This breed is one of the Kennel Club's vulnerable native breeds. This is another breed we went to see in the breed rings earlier. We're seeing the junior bitch class winner move off the judge. 
This is for the bitch challenge in the breed. So the Manchester Terrier is a vulnerable breed. And what does this mean? Well, it's any native British or Irish breed with fewer than 300 registrations per year. The breed nearly became extinct during the Second World War, but it survived for 110 years with a few dedicated supporters. So the judge is moving each class winner individually so he can make his final decision as to where his bitch CC and reserve bitch CC will go. So who will he award best bitch prize to? Jack Watson, a very experienced terrier man, is the judge today. And the bitch CC goes to the open bitch winner champion Mansaya casting circles with Felfrey. She's owned by Felicity Freer. And reserve best bitch goes to the junior winner, Digelsa Deja Vu, owned by Mick Oxley. There we have it. Best bitch and reserve best bitch, Manchester Terriers. So this is the challenge for best of breed. The best dog in the front there, followed by best bitch. I'm sure the judge, Jack Watson, will perhaps move them again, or maybe not. The dog champion, Chernot Concerto at Manfreya. And Felicity Freer's bitch. Yeah, they're moving around again for the judge, Jack Watson. So who will be the representative to go through to the group later on. He's made his decision, he's walked, oh, it's Felicity Freer. Best of breed goes to the bitch champion, Mansaya, casting circles with Felfrey. I'm sure she's delighted. Oxley won the reserve bitch ticket today with his 14-month-old Manchester Terrier. Congratulations. How do you feel about that? Absolutely over the moon. And tell us a little bit about the breed. They're quite versatile. They are. Um, these days, the more and more people are finding out about Manchester Terriers and they're using them for agility, obedience, heel, heel work to music and, of course, showing as well. And there was a bit of a celebration going on today. Tell us a bit about that. 2012 is the British Manchester Terrier Club's 75th anniversary year. And I understand there's um, a special exhibition um, in conjunction with the Kennel Club, an art exhibition. That's right. The Kennel Club have got um, an art exhibition and it's called The Terrier's Tale. And it actually features just the Manchester Terrier. And there's works of art from the 1700s. It's wonderful. And how long does that go on for? It runs until the end of July. Fantastic. So I've still got time to go and see it then. You have. <laughs> and just tell us, in the group ring, do they do as well in the group up against the other flashier breeds? Well, these days, fortunately, we had a standing joke that they used to be called the invisible dog <laughs> because if we had a best of breed, the judge used to simply just walk past us and never, never seem to have a look. But these days, the judges are getting more knowledgeable, so they're looking at us a bit more. And over the last couple of years, we've had some really good group placings. Oh, well, that's brilliant for the breed then. So today's judge actually was Jack Watson, and he judged the Terrier group back at Crufts two years ago. Um, Jack, you're a very knowledgeable man and a big Terrier man. How did you find judging the Manchester today? I really enjoyed it. They've got some good puppies coming along, which is good for the breed. And the, the top winners were excellent today. They were all of a style which is something that we really want, to have that continuity of style so that they all more or less look the same and match the breed standard. And how many times have you um, judged this breed now at championship show level? This will be my third time. And was it as good as the first time? Yes, it was, equally as good. The qualities improved slightly, especially with the youngsters. The quantity, I think, yes, I think this is as good as entry we've had for a long time. So here is Martha in the group ring. She's only two years old, has four CCs, all with best of breed. After the break, more from Best in Show. And we take a closer look at another vulnerable breed.
Oh, first of all, could I just say, ladies and gentlemen, please don't believe everything that you've heard about me <laughs> because the truth is definitely much worse. <laughs> And this lady moved in with a rough collie. And I thought that that dog was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. Well, he let this bitch out. And Pat just went, <gasps> and I said, you shut up. I said, we haven't got <laughs> I said, we haven't got her in the car yet. <laughs> She's doing the standards. Anyway, uh, Lily goes in and she said, um, Miss Turner, Miss Turner, lacquer is prohibited here in the States. So Lily said, it is a tome and all. I've not put one up with lacquer in it air. Well, she had a little 10-inch toy and its top knot was about here, I guess. <laughs> and when it moved, it was pulling it to the side. <laughs> it was like leaning over. And she let these two bitches out in the paddock and Steve was standing there and it was another do like at Atkinson's with Pat. Steve said to me, oh, look at that, he said. What I'd give to own a bitch like that. I said, you be quiet. I said, that's not the champion. <laughs> and Alan said, what do you think? I said, oh yes, I'll have her. And as soon as I said I'd have her, Alan shook hands with me and he turned to Steve. He said, there's no offence here. He said, I'm not selling this bitch to you. I'm selling it to Derek. As... Uh, This is ridiculous. No, no, no. As no. a lifelong friend and a pensioner. <laughs> so, so I said, oh, right. And he charged me £200. Good Lord. For that bitch. We made her a champion and she produced us three champions. Another champion was made up at the show, Belleville Burning Passion, the Norfolk Terrier, owned and handled by Cathy Thompson Morgan, fresh from winning Best of Breed at Crufts. The Norwich Terrier, Red Dash going for gold, owned by Ruth Corkill. Chris Boom was winning his first CC, best of breed, at just 14 months old. <laughs> Top Parson Russell Terrier for 2011 was champion Paris Comanche Chief, also winning best of breed today. Now has seven CCs and seven best of breeds. One is junior warrant title and show certificate merit by the age of 16 months. This Scottish Terrier Emmendon Black Pudding was made up into a champion today, owned by Alan and Margaret Goddard. His father was a very successful Scotty who won a general championship show best in show. As the Manchester Terrier we saw earlier, the Celian Terrier is also one of the Kennel Club's vulnerable breeds. A breed which was hugely popular in the early 20th century and once owned by the royal family. Its numbers are now unfortunately dwindling. We went to see the breed being judged here earlier today. So the breed judge, Janet Wanacott, is moving the best dog and best bitch for best of breed. The notoriously high maintenance breed to keep them looking as good as you see them in the ring. So who's she going to give it to? Ah, it goes to the male, Irish international champion, Sibak Celtic Connection. A great win for a dog who's travelled from Ireland.
And now we go on to best puppy and breed. Moving once more for the judge. Obviously a lot more immature, but oh, it goes to Joanne Bettis, who is handling her parents, Len and Dennis Bettis's Celium Terrier, Cole Rose, Parker Plus, Ornella. And we have all the winners going round. So in Celium Terriers today at National Terrier, best of breed was Alan Daly, all the way from Ireland, with this lovely dog. Tell us about him, Alan. Well, I bought Alex from Cathy Thomas from Wales, Cardigan in Wales. Uh, she's just three years old, and it was my first Celium. And today is his first CC and best of breed. Oh, fantastic. So, so you're delighted, I'm assuming. Oh, ab absolutely, yes. I, I bought two Celiums from Cathy, and they, they both now have won a CC. And uh, I've since bred from the bitch, and I have a lovely new puppy coming on as well. So I love them. A fabulous breed. Absolutely delighted. And they're so, such sparkly condition as well. How do you get them looking so good? Is it a lot of work? Uh, there's a good bit of work. You have to just try to keep them clean as best you can and, and you know, walk on the coat and that type of thing. And they need to have a wiry coat and you hand strip them, you know. But, um, you know, it's, it's worth it when it gets a result like this. <laughs> absolutely. Worth the trip from Ireland, then. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so I found Biddy Horn, who's actually been in the breed for more than 50 years. Now, I understand you had a bit of an unusual start in the breed. Yes, I bought the first dog from a commercial kennel where you, you just bought pets. And um, took him around the show and he used to get seconds and thirds for about three years. A lot of breeders didn't think he was any good. It's a difficult breed to trim. And it took me three years to learn how to strip them and trim them. And I eventually got him looking quite well. And I was lucky to drop in, I think, um, with my dog when the fam very famous breeder, Cora Charters, uh, retired. And we never looked back. We got 10 cc's with him. And uh, then he produced another champion for me. Uh, I can't remember how many champions I've had, but we've won well over three, 400 cc's in the time. And. Um, we had a lot, of, a lot of fun in the breed too, you know. I don't, the breed at the moment isn't as good as it should be. Um, you know, there were some very, very good dogs years ago. But um, it's, we, we've got to try and get more people in the breed and get them interested, that's the thing really. Because the numbers at the moment, they're, they're not massive in numbers, are they? No, they're not. And the entries going down, I mean, Crufts this year was the lowest entry they'd had for 50 years, which is dreadful. And today there were only 22 entered and about six absent. It's very disappointing, really. That's so the thing. What, what should people at home um, find attractive about the breed, then? Are, are they great family dogs? They're a good family dog, yes. I mean, uh, my mother had them when I, when I was little, uh, as pets. And there were a lot of them back in the 30s. And um, then the Westies came in, and everybody went for Westies instead of Celium. Oh. But it is, it, I think, that the, for showing, it is the trimming that's very difficult. And I'm assuming, because they only come in white, <laughs> yeah, that's quite well, a difficult colour to keep clean. White, but we, get, we get black ears and brown ears oh, and yeah. things like that, you know. Um, and it is because they're white, but they have a very difficult coat. If you, if you look at the Westies, they have a very wiry coat and they're easier to trim. The Celium isn't. And you've got to have a lot of patience, you know, and it's, it's hard work in actual fact. But you enjoy it? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still doing it. Um, but it is, it's, 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 a, it's a nice breed and we've been in a long time. And anybody who would like to start needs to get to a breeder with, who's, who's got a reputation of breeding good ones and start off, you know, we've wet, there are one or two new ones here today. Absolutely, know. they're the next generation, aren't they? That's right, yes. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Biddy. It's been okay. delighted to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so here is Alan Daly's dog going round. If the Celium looked familiar, it's possibly because, remember, a Celium took best in show at Crafts back in 2009. It was FB's Hildego at Good Spice. Alan Daly delighted today to win all the way from Ireland. Kirsty Miller was handling the Sky Terrier, Field League Arthur Sixpence. This was the first CC and best of breed for this dog, and he also has three reserve CCs. Kirsty also owned the Bitch CC winner, so a good day for the kennel. This is Seam Rog, best of me for Kerry Down, owned by Evelyn and Robert Ross. Taking a first CC on the day, he's also been very successful in Europe before coming over to the UK. The 
bar was full of people to watch this next breed, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Very popular and numerically strong breed. Highest entry in the group today of 203 dogs. This is Dare to Dream, owned by Caroline and Paul Mason, winning the second CC on the day. Nolelian Bertha Brainbox was a first CC winner today, owned by Rachel Pierce and David and Wendy Hughes. <laughs> and last but not least, international champion, here I am, Vom Deppenbruck, visiting from Germany, the West Highland White Terrier was winning under a Swedish judge, so a real international day. Owned by Bernd, Louise and Tina Deppenbruck, also won the CC at Birmingham National. Feralith Awards Best in Show and Best Puppy in Show. If uh, the new chairman were sat in the audience tonight, yes. What would you ask him? To care. To care about us a bit more to remember that the Kennel Club is supposed to be for the furtherance of pedigree dogs, and we are pedigree dogs. Um, I want them to care about us. I want them to share our interests. I want them to stop caring about the RSPCA and care about us. I can remember once Edna gave me a bitch that I was very thrilled with and Olive said, where did you get that from? And I said, Mrs. Harold gave it to me. She said, she did, she couldn't have sold the damn thing, could she? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and then Ollie gave me a pitch that I thought was lovely, and Edna said, well, make sure you showed him long grass with feet like that. <laughs> They stopped my life, effectively, for mistakes. I see myself as the judge that was banned. in show at National Terrier 2012 was the Irish Terrier Finn and I'm delighted to be joined by Tony one of the owners here and John the handler John Averis now Tony you're delighted aren't you because oh, yeah. your first big win at National Terrier yeah yeah it is yeah yeah I've had many uh, best of breed here many times uh, but never best in show so it's a good win yeah. what does it mean to you winning at uh, like the Terrier of all Terrier shows Ah, this is the ultimate for me. This is more important to me than Crufts. <gasps> really? Oh, yeah. National Terrier and Montgomery in America, they had the two shows. Looked like he had a lot of support out there. Yeah, he did, yeah. He's a lovely dog. He's, um, he's captured many people's hearts while he's been here. He's good. He's done fantastic in Britain, hasn't he? Uh, he has, yeah. And he's been a top winner in America, too. Yes, he had um, 125 groups in America and 20 of best in shows in America. That's amazing. So, uh, and. Uh, He's now going to have a short spell. We're going to take him to Italy on Thursday. And we're going to go to a show in Bologna. And then he'll be back here, just playing in the garden. And then we'll take him to the World Show. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. he's got a great year ahead of him. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And that'll be the end. He'll just come home and play around in the garden as a pet. Oh, that's superb yeah. stuff. Now, John, you've had Best in <coughs> Show at National Terrier before, haven't you? Yes, uh, in 2009 with the Lakeland Terrier. My mother bred, actually. So that was. this is the... This is the ultimate, like Tony says, to win this show means everything. And to do it with an Irish, such an handsome fella as him, it's, can't say no more, really brilliant. <laughs> well, many congratulations Thank to you, you both. Your best in show at National Terrier 2012 is Finn, the Irish Terrier. Good lad. Thank you. So reserve best in show at National Terrier 2012 was Meg, the three-year-old Lakeland Terrier. Warren Bradley actually was showing her, but you don't own her, do you? No, um, a man called Ricky Cartwright owns her from uh, Pont de Prix, South Wales. Meg uh, went to America when she was six months old and uh, became an American champion and just came back uh, earlier this year. So we've shown her in two shows and we won two shows so far. Absolutely fantastic. And what's she like to show then? Uh, she's a great show dog. Uh, she uh, just loves being in the ring. And she looked really feisty in there. 
yeah, she gets very excited. <laughs> <laughs> did you, when you went into the ring today, did you have any hopes of perhaps getting somewhere in the placings? Um, well, you always hope to do well with the dogs. As, uh, we're a professional handler, so you can paint the show the dogs. You just come and do your job and hopefully you do the best. Well, well done, Warren, Meg and Ricky as well. Thank you. Group three at National Terrier was the gorgeous Manchester Terrier, which we saw winning best of breed in the breed rings earlier under Jack Watson. Felicity Freer owns this lovely dog. Tell us a little bit about her, Felicity. Well, her name's Martha. She's a two-year-old bitch. Um, she's had four um, CCs now and uh, I think four reserves. And she also got to group three at Boston. Oh, that's fantastic. And she's only two as well. That's quite yep. incredible. Yes, no, it's um, quite an achievement for someone so young and they're not an easy breed to show. Um, so, yes, I'm very proud of her. And especially you've been shown for many, many years, lots yep. of terrier breeds as well. Yep. This is your first Manchester? My first Manchester that I own, yes. I've handled um, Manchester since I was eight years old and my first Manchester when I was eight. Um, but this is the first one that I've actually owned and made up myself, which is very nice. Well, many congratulations and hopefully all the twins will uh, <laughs> perhaps become junior handlers later on. Let's <laughs> hope so, yeah. <laughs> congratulations. Thank you very much. Just some clarification in a moment. As far as the smooth is included. So, best puppy at its first show was Saradin Taste of Honey, owned and bred by Judith Averis and handled by Yitka Kuzova. Best puppy Australian terrier was Sill Hill Scarlet Ribbon with Sherrix. Handled by Paul Erdley, who co-owns the dog with Sue McCourt, who bred her. She also won Puppy of the Year heat on the day and took the reserve CC. The Cairn Terrier Best Puppy, Len Trika, Sweet Sensation. She was Best Puppy at Crafts and Best Puppy in Show at the Midland Cairn Terrier Club Limited Show and is owned by Pat and Doug Clark. Anne Morn bred both the best of breed winning wire fox and the best puppy, which is this bitch, Rock Alicia, free and easy. She was also best puppy in breed at Crufts the previous month. Oh. Nemia Poetry in Motion Arcama was at her first show but took best puppy and won the reserve bitch ticket. She's owned by Pat Munro, who owns the sire and is bred by Peter and Becky Ensel, which remarkably is only their second litter. One of the oldest terriers is the Dandy Dimmel. Best puppy went to Linda Bromley's Cass and Carry going back to Mishada. As mentioned earlier in the programme, they are on the vulnerable breeds list, so have less than 300 registrations per year. Ripplington Black Cherry was best puppy in Parsons for Sid, Diana and Steph Collis. At only eight months old, she went best puppy in show at Hearts and Essex Border Canine Society Open Show. Yeah. Bellevue Something Special was at her first show for owner breeder Tina Squire from Dorset. Her mother has produced the breed record holder Bellevue Town Flirt at Gilbury.
Summerfield gave Best Puppin Show at National Terrier to the Kerry Blue Terrier. She's called Paige and she's 11 months old and at her first show. And owner Pat Munro, that's a pretty way, good way to start uh, her uh, show career. Yes. If somebody could get rid of that mouse, she'd be all right. <laughs> um, yeah, lovely, absolutely. Well, I didn't expect really her to do anything, but I think the breed judge liked her a lot. He gave her the reserve CC and said he liked her. And uh, look, she's gone on to... Best puppy in show. I mean, credit must go to Peter and Becky. It's only their second litter, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Only your second litter then? Second and litter. you're the breeders yes, of Paige? Are. Yes, yeah. And uh, we, we um, Pat's dog was actually the stud dog, so it's a blend between us. Um, and yeah, we're very, very proud of her. Uh, we managed to make her mother up into a champion, and her sire was a champion also. Yeah. So, yes, in our, in our first litter. So we're hoping that Paige will follow suit. Fantastic. And, and how much work goes into a Kerry Blue Terrier's coat? Oh, yes, an awful lot of work. Uh, obviously, there's the bathing preparation and, and things like that. Um, but as well, uh, you know, it takes a long, long time to trim. Well, many congratulations, Becky, and Thank to you. your husband, Peter, as Thank well, you. and Pat Munro on Best Bathroom Show at National Terrier. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks. So I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Feralith Summerfield, the best in show judge here at National Terrier. Now, Feralith, you were actually a re late replacement, weren't you, for Roger Wright? Yes, I, I was. I was asked today. Um, sadly, um, Roger is not well, and so on the morning of the show felt that he couldn't travel. But I'm very lucky to judge Best in Show at National Terrier. It's the second time I've, I've judged here and I've done their open show Dog of the Year and I've judged, over the years, I've judged many breeds here. And what did you think of them overall then in your Best in Show lineup? Well, I was very pleased actually with the um, Best of Breed winners and the, I pulled out eight, but I could have pulled out more. It's nice to see the Terriers doing well you know because I started in terriers so that they you know I have a soft spot for them obviously <laughs> and I, it gave me great pleasure to see so many nice ones and in best puppy in show as well you chose the Kerry blue terrier that looked like a lovely example yes I think it is I think it'll do well it was at its first show and so incidentally was the Westie the Westie wasn't quite so forward when she was standing but moving what a lovely mover a quality bitch, both of them, lovely. Well, I think Roger will probably see this on television and think that, that you did a very, very good job today. <laughs> I doubt it, I doubt it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ferris Summerfield, for joining us and uh, being such a great judge for today's National Terrier Best in Show. So, we'll see you next time on Around the Dog World at Welks.